Hello everyone, this is Sherman here from TechOS and in this week's app of the week I'm going to be taking a look at Spark for iPhone now. Although I do say Spark for iPhone, this is actually now an app available on the iPad. So you can download it on both of your devices and it's universal, it's free so you can go ahead and try it out. And essentially what this app is, is basically a third party email client. So you can just use it to view your emails just like you do in the standard mail or iOS app. Now there's also an Apple Watch version so if you've got an Apple Watch then you can view your notifications and other um, features on your Apple Watch. So I've been using this for the past uh, couple of months just testing it out and I'm going to give you my thoughts on it so that's why at the bottom of my screen as you can see I've sort of replaced the standard mail app with Spark and I've been using that as my main email client so I've put all my five different email accounts I've got I've put them all onto my uh, you know onto Spark and then I've been using that so if I launch the app you can see I'm greeted with my what smart, Spark calls Smart Inbox which is what they encourage you to use that's what I've been using for the past few um, you know couple of months since I've been using it what this does is it basically um, organizes your emails into different categories to make them easier to read through. So all your emails are sort of taken from every single inbox. So all your inboxes from uh, that you you know that you've registered in the app, they are all aggregated together and then they're um, broken down to these different categories. So I've only got one category here to show you but um, I will talk through another category which isn't actually here at the moment but the one I've got up here as you can see is newsletters now this is just uh, from emails that would collect in here that would perhaps send you updates so perhaps like Amazon or eBay or which is sort of advertising your products to you and if you sign up for sort of RSS feeds or other kinds of newsletter websites you will get um, those emails come through to to your uh, you know your newsletter section here now. Obviously, I've got my YouTube email set up here, and so part of that is every time someone subscribes to me, if they've put public subscriptions on, an email gets sent through to me. So obviously, you can see I can see I've got a couple of people who subscribe to me, and every time a comment comes through on one of my videos, I'll get an email. So obviously that's sort of a newsletter type email so that will be put into this category now the category you aren't seeing over here is notifications now these are sort of emails that wouldn't usually update you of status or some something that you'd um, be having so for example if you got an email from Facebook um, perhaps telling you if you've got notifications or status updates from people then those emails would get categorized into the notifications category so you can just go straight into there and do it like that now below the categories I'm not going to scroll down because I've got personal emails there but you can just see it has my inbox so just my standard inbox which has all my emails now for um, your information when you finish reading an email from one of these categories so say from the newsletters category um, and you've read it it disappears from the newsletters category and it will automatically be put into the chronologically ordered position in your inbox so that's how that would work but that's basically how the smart inbox sort of categorizes things so now I'm going to go into the actual email viewer so I've got an email here from the app store so if I just touch that and it's just a email sort of a, a newsletter email that came from Apple and this would have been in the newsletters um, category but obviously I've read it so it's now moved into my inbox so with the email viewer at the top I can press pin press this orange icon at the top to pin an email um, and that sort of adds it to a list that I can go back to afterwards so that's a nice feature to have I can hit this icon in the top right hand corner which is a snooze button so if I tap on that it will let me snooze this email so what it will basically do is it will um, send me a notification when you know after the time I've set so perhaps if I want to come back to an email later on I can do that so if I want to come back uh, to this email tomorrow I can tap tomorrow and it will snooze until then and then it will remind me to go back to it 
you can customize these by touching customize and I'll show you some of that later on when we delve into the settings let me just hit cancel at the bottom you've got your sort of toolbar now here you've got all sorts of different uh, controls which you can customize in the settings I'll show you that afterwards um, you have some standard controls for sort of replying and forwarding emails to other people and you can also press obviously the trash icon in the middle to delete it uh, on the left if you tap the circle you can basically mark a message as unseen so that it looks like you haven't read it so if you want to go back to it later without having to pin it you can do it like that and you can also uh, use the icon on the right to uh, share the message so if I tap on that you can uh, got a few options so you can print it, save it, move it, uh, archive it, delete it, view details, mark a spam, save it as PDF. And if I tap more it will just open the standard iOS share, share sheet so if you've got another sort of app that you want to share it with, if you want to message it to someone with an app that you've got or send it by iMessage then you can do it through there. So you just get quite a few options that you can use um, in the email view which is nice to see. I'm just going to hit the back button and go back to my uh, smart inbox. So that's those two parts of the app um, taken um, into account. So now I'm going to show you the sidebar. So if I go to the top left and hit the icon, I get to my sidebar. Now at the top, um, you can add new email accounts. So just tap and you can just go through the standard setup process of adding an email account. If you need to sign in with server details, then you can obviously do it from there. So that's that part. And underneath, you can obviously tap on the smart inbox, which is what I'm in. Or you can tap on the standard inbox. So this will basically open us an inbox which doesn't have all the different categories. So if you prefer to have it like that, then you can still have it use it like that. You don't have to have all the different categories that Spark um, uses. You can access all your archived emails below that. So any emails which you've archived um, appear into one place. So again taken from all of your email accounts um, put into this one folder and the same for attachments so all your attachments from all your emails accounts will be brought into this one place where you can access them instantly if you look underneath that there are there are pins so any emails again which you've pinned from across all your emails you can access from here same for sent and drafts and trash so it takes everything from all your emails and puts it in this one place now when I scroll down I've got a few email accounts which I'm going to have blurred out but um, so you've just got your list of email accounts and I'm not going to tap on these arrows because it's going to reveal some personal information but if you tap on the arrows to the right of each inbox you can access all your different um, parts of the account so you'll be accessed for each individual account the inbox, pins, drafts, sent emails, your trashed emails, spam emails uh, which you've received uh, and archived emails and you'll also be able to see any folders which you've created in that inbox so or in that mailbox and that's all in one place so you can just click on the arrows and you can see all of that stuff um, so finally I'm just going to take you through the settings of the app so if I touch the settings icon and now it will bring me to this new panel where I can um, go through everything so obviously you can click at the top where it says mail accounts to manage your mail accounts, add accounts, delete accounts and edit um, different parts of your, each account and you can tap on connected services now I'm not going to tap on that at the moment because I've got a couple of personal things in there but what this essentially lets you do is add external services which you can use in the email viewer so for example you could um, link your iCloud account into this app and what that will let you do is perhaps if you're viewing an email you can save an email using that share sheet that I showed you earlier you can actually send emails and save them directly to your iCloud Drive so if you want to use them later then you don't have to go back into the app you can access them from your iCloud Drive on all your other devices so that's something that's nice you can add all kinds of other accounts like Dropbox and various other cloud services which are available um, beneath that there's some personalization options so if I tap on that you'll get this um, highly customizable um, settings panel so you can basically use it to customize your experience um, a lot more than you can do with the standard iOS app so if, if customization is a big thing for you then this might actually be quite a good app for you so 
you can personalize that top section of the sidebar which I showed you earlier so you can change the order of each of these by tapping edit and dragging them around like so or you can get rid of them or add new uh, parts to your sidebar so you can just customize it to um, your liking and then if you tap on swipes at the top of the screen you can access um, your options for this now this is actually quite interesting so if you've used the standard iOS mail app then you may know you can actually swipe across on emails uh, to take actions on them so I know in iOS you can swipe across to delete or mark as red or flag and various other options now you can customize them on iOS as well but you can also customize them here with spark but you actually get quite a few more options with spark so unlike iOS uh, iOS is standard mail app you can slide all the way to the left and you'll get an action slide all the way to the right and you'll get another action with spark however you can swipe um, halfway left you'll get an action all the way left you'll get an action so swipe halfway right you'll get another action swipe all the way right you'll get another action so it, you just get more customization so at the moment I've set it for left short pin left long read or unread uh, so basically mark it unread or un or red. I've set the right short swipe for none so nothing happens if I do that and I've set the right long to delete so I'm actually going to demo this if I go back into my my uh, smart inbox if I slide left uh, short it will delete sorry long slide right long it will delete now I haven't set anything for short so it will just do delete However, if I go left, if I swipe short, it will pin. However, if I continue swiping, it will mark it as red. And obviously, that will turn to unread if I've already read it. So that is a nice feature that you can have. So you can sort of customize it and make it more to your liking. So there are the swipes. Next, I've got widgets. Now, widgets are quite interesting, actually. You can have this little bubble in the bottom of next to the compose button, which is next, which is in the bottom right of the screen and if you tap on this you get all your, these different icons so I've set it up to have attachments, snooze items, pins and archived emails you can just tap on each of them and you can open to that relevant section now from this part of the uh, let me just go up that from this part of the settings in the personalization you can actually choose where this little icon is so at the top or the bottom depending on what you want and you can choose which ones I want there and if I tap on one I'm not going to do it at the moment uh, it will actually go give you a list of all your different email accounts and choose which uh, accounts you want to be able to view so perhaps with this archive icon I want to only be able to view emails from one email account so I can do it from here and then for pins maybe I want to be able to only be able to view the pinned emails from my YouTube email account so that's a nice feature to have built into the app. Underneath that you can just change the background colour of the viewer so that's quite standard. Uh, something obviously which the mail app in iOS doesn't let you do. Now here you can customise the email viewer by clicking underneath that. You can choose the main toolbar action which is in the middle to be archive, delete or archive and delete. So that's uh, an option you have. You can choose um, what you want to happen when you've finished with an email so when an email is archived or deleted you can choose whether you want to open the next email in your inbox or whether you want to return to the email list now obviously with the standard iOS app it is usually open next so it will as soon as you delete an email it will go to the next email but I've set it to return to the email list because that's generally what I prefer to have and at the bottom here you can choose your default browser now you can choose from Safari and I've got Chrome installed on my phone so that will pop up over here and I can choose Chrome if I want to and I, or I can use in-app because Spark has its own uh, sort of browser which uses Apple's WebKit developing tools and essentially what this will do is instead of opening up in Safari you can open it up in the app so it will just open a pop-up window and this is useful if you don't want to have your Safari uh, sort of app um, having tabs accumulating so that's something that's nice to have 
Um, down below we've got signatures, which is pretty standard for most email apps. So I'm just going to just add a signature. I can add a HTML signature or a text signature. So if I just want to type in my name here, save, and then obviously at the end of every one of my emails, just select that signature, and that will be applied. So that's pretty standard. With badges, what you can do is show or hide the uh, icon on the app uh, thing on the home screen. So if I go home, as you can see on the Spark icon, it says number five. That's basically indicating I've got five unread emails, and that's basically the badge icon. With this uh, option, you can change the um, appearance of that. So you can choose whether it's uh, you can disable them altogether or decide to have them or you can also choose whether you want that number to indicate the total number of emails in your inbox or whether you just wanted to indicate the unread only so for most people that will be just unread only so if you've got five unread emails then it will display five however if you chose the inbox option then it would um, display the number of emails in your whole inbox so in my case that would be about 600 emails or something stupid like that so obviously I don't want to have that on my home screen but some people may like that uh, I can choose my snooze options so I can um, add whichever options I want to be available to me on my uh, main smart inbox place and I can customize them customize them as well so if I want this evening to be uh, set to six o'clock and I can have that so whenever I hit um, snooze until six o'clock uh, sorry this evening it will automatically remember to snooze uh, to alert me at six o'clock not the default I think it was ten o'clock or uh, whatever the time was there so you just get some customization here or you can just hit default alert at the bottom uh, down at the bottom of the notification actions now when I'm on the lock screen if I get an email I can slide across to the left, I believe, yes, as part of Apple's interactive notification system, and I can either mark an email as read or delete. I can go in and I can choose what I want, so I can have archive or delete as the primary action, uh, or I can have archive mark as read or delete, so I can just choose whichever one I want to have uh, on the lock screen, so it just gives me more personalization. Finally, we've just got a few um, other sort of small settings. So we've got sync settings via iCloud. So if I've got multiple devices, say my iPhone and my iPad, if I want my settings to be synced between them, then I can set this up and it will do that. Quick replies. Now what this is, is when you get an email, if you want to reply to it quickly, then you can tap at the bottom of the email, a small toolbar will appear, and you can tap on any of these to just reply to them instantly so perhaps if you want to have the call me um, you know reply then that's a quick reply sort of feature so you can set um, when you when you get an email tap on call me and then it will send an email back to the person with call me so that's just a nice feature to have if you go through all your emails and you want to be able to quickly reply to people Sound preferences, so you can set for your notification alerts if you want Spark sound. So this will just use a standard Spark um, notification sound, which is, I think, based on their sort of theme. Or you can use a standard iOS sound, so the sounds that you've set up in iOS, and then they'll be uh, used instead. And you can use the sent mail sound if you want to turn that on and off. Privacy settings, they are there, and I'm not going to go in because obviously they have got private information. But you can just change your privacy settings about... Uh, whether you want notifications to be viewed on the lock screen, whether you want to have a passcode required or your fingerprint before you can act on the, on the notification from the lock screen, that sort of thing. So it's just um, something to keep your emails more secure and then you've got just some um, developer information at the bottom which you can obviously use if you want to send feedback or other uh, things. But anyway, that's it for this app of the week. If you've got any questions or comments on Spark or you want any assistance with the app, don't be hesitant to get in contact with me. Uh, all the details will be in the description of the video. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.